Okay, welcome back for more motor controls. Uh, we just finished the basic control, and uh, some of you kind of struggled there with, uh, with that lesson, and particularly in the lab. And that's okay, we're making progress, you're moving forward. If you knew it all, you wouldn't be here in the class to begin with. So um, it, it is a little tough to get your head around sometimes, um, but the more you work with it, the more easy it'll become. Okay, just continue to, to plug away with it, and, and by all means, come see me in the lab or my office, one of the two, and we will uh, sit down and work things out. Uh, if you're having little areas of uh, fuzziness or some, uh, some of the muddy points for you, we'll get them all cleared up for you. But I do want to move on, and the next thing we're going to talk about is reversing a motor. Now, um, so far all we've done right now is just run the motor in forward, and now we want to uh, take the opportunity and run it in reverse direction. We want to be able to reverse it. One of the reasons that you might want to reverse a three-phase induction motor is uh, one example that comes to mind is on a conveyor. If you have material moving down a conveyor and it gets jammed up or something like that and the, mo and the motor uh, goes into an overloaded situation where it trips it out and you reset it, you're not going to, keep, you're not going to want to keep running it forward because it's just going to continue to jam the material in the conveyor. You're going to want to reverse that, back it up a little bit, clear the jam, whatever the, the part may be or the product going down the line. Uh, you know, you want to be able to clear that out and reverse that and once you're done you'll go back to moving it forward. Uh, there are some uh, applications where you don't want to reverse a motor uh, and one in particular would be something like a hydraulic pump, uh, particularly uh, a, a piston pump. But you don't want to run it backwards, you could really reverse the fluid flow direction and screw everything up. So there are going to be some occasions where you don't want to, but in this uh, particular lesson we're going to talk about the need to be able to reverse it. So let's go ahead and get started, okay? First of all, in order to reverse a motor, all we're going to do, as you can see here, is our three-phase motor moving in the clockwise direction. We simply have L1 tied to a T2 uh, on our motor, and uh, L2 to T1, and L3 to T3. And reversing it, what we've done here is we've tied, uh, we left L1 to T2, L2 is now going to T3, and L3 is now going to T1. So what we've done is we've swapped two leads, okay? That is how you swap a three-phase motor. You simply swap two of the three-phase uh, power leads coming into the motor, uh, or it could be at the disconnect or somewhere in that three-phase circuit right here. We want to swap those two leads, uh, two of the um, incoming phases, and then we'll reverse the direction of the rotating magnetic field, and you, you already know that that means that the, rotate, the uh, rotor is going to chase that uh, magnetic field in the opposite direction. Okay. So, how do we do that? Like I said, what, what we're uh, doing is swapping the two leads, but I've been your teacher long enough, you know that I'm not going to be satisfied with you just knowing that swapping two leads reverses the motor. I want you to know why, okay? So going back to one of our first lessons, or, but by doing this, what we're doing is we're simply changing the sequence that the sine wave hits the three-phase motor, okay? So let's take a look at that. <clears throat> okay, here I've got a three-phase motor with a set of A coils, a set of B coils, and a set of C-phase coils, okay? And over here is the three-phase sine wave that is coming from our power plant uh, that's coming into our facility, okay? And we know that um, each one of the sines or each one of the uh, sine waves peaks uh, 120 electrical degrees from each other, okay? So as one fades or tapers off, the next one is building and to its maximum point and so on and so forth. So let's see how we got it hooked up. We've got A phase going to our A coils, B phase is going to our B coils, and the C phase uh, sine wave is going to our set of C coils, okay? Fairly straightforward. We're gonna, we're gonna run that motor, okay? So I'm gonna use this bottle here for, um, as an example, as our rotor, okay? So you can see that as A phase peaks, the magnetic field between the A pole, poles right here uh, is the strongest. So that our, rot our rotor, which is just mounted in, in between bearings here, is gonna be uh, swinging and attracted to this uh, strongest magnetic field where it's peaked right there. Now, as, we, as it fades off, uh, the B phase becomes the stronger magnetic field, okay, as it starts to peak, and our rotor is always gonna chase that uh, strongest magnetic field, so the rotor spins and aligns itself with the B coils in the motor, and as the B fades off, C will pick up, and then it will chase the, most, the strongest magnetic field, which is C, which is hooked to our C coils, and as you can see, I'm moving in the counterclockwise direction, okay? So that's hooked up straight up to A, B, and C. Now what we want to do here is we want to reverse the direction. And what did I say earlier about reversing it? We just swap two leads. So let's do that. We're going to leave A phase in its position. And then we're going to take B phase. Instead of going to the B coils, we're going to take the B phase power 
come in, and we're going to connect it to the C phase instead. And likewise, we're going to take the C phase power a lead and connect it to the B phase. So this is what's going to happen. We're going to start now rotating in the clockwise direction. A phase never changed. And incidentally, if you swap all three leads, you're just going to continue to run in the same direction you did uh, prior to making any changes. So we're going to leave A phase alone. It's going to be our strongest magnetic field right here between these two uh, coils. And then as it tapers off like it did before, B phase will, will come on and, and peak with its strength and power. And our uh, rotor is going to want to chase that magnetic field. And our, our B phase is connected to our C coils, though. And so it's going to align itself with the strongest magnetic field, which is being delivered to the C coils. Well, B phase is going to um, taper off, and C is going to ramp up. We have C phase connected to the B phase of our motor, and it's going to continue to go around in the clockwise direction to align itself with the B. And then it's going to start the whole process again. So now you can see our rotor now spins in a clockwise direction because we, we took our A power phase and connected it to the C and our C to the B. So those are the two leads that we swapped in order to get our motor to reverse, okay? Now there's several ways that we can reverse a motor. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break these, uh, each, each one of these uh, ways of reversing motor, I'm gonna break them up into individual videos here. So number one, a little bit, little bit shorter, and also you can reference them uh, easier if you need to go back to the material. But there's the manual uh, reversing method, uh, there's the push button interlock method, and there's also the reversing magnetic motor starter method. Okay, we're going to start with the manual motor starter uh, reversing method, and you do that with a drum switch. Now, I've seen drum switches used. Again, I've used a, I've been in manufacturing uh, where we use a lot of, of, of raw materials and, and, and scrap material, and um, a lot of times we have conveyors, and the, like particularly the scrap conveyor material will uh, go hang, it'll hang up and we have to have an operator out there that needs to have the ability to A, stop the conveyor motor without having to find the operator wherever the operator may be in a control booth or out on another part of the machine. So he needs to have that ability to stop the um, conveyor out there uh, remotely where he's at, okay? And so uh, one way to do that is with a drum switch, okay? Now, I've got a, a drum switch it's the one that came off the Amatrol trainer, okay? Uh, this is made by Dayton, all right? And basically what you're gonna do, and we're gonna step through all of this uh, in detail, but you're gonna basically provide three phases in, and the switch is gonna provide the three phases out to the motor. What it's gonna be doing is swapping phases internally, okay? And we're gonna break this down as we go. But like I said, this is uh, to, in order to, in the middle, in the middle position like this, uh, we've got it where it is an off. There's, it's not gonna run either direction. We can make it run forward or we can make it run reverse by the flipping of this handle. But what's going on inside there to make that happen? Well, first of all, let's take a look at the uh, connection diagram, okay? When we're in the middle section here, there's no connections whatsoever. When we, uh, you see over here, when we go to reverse, we're connecting one and two, three and four, and five and six. And then in the forward direction, we're connecting one, three, two, four, and five and six. That's not gonna make any sense to you at all right now. That's where we're gonna break it down though, okay? When we open up and see where the, where the line voltage comes in, this is where it starts to make a little bit more sense. Again, we're in the off position, okay, and there is no connection between terminals one and two, three and four, or five and six. So let's look at the switch. First of all, we're gonna go to uh, li uh, number line th three, excuse me. Uh, line three comes in and lands on terminal three, okay? And then you will connect line two and connect it to terminal six and line one will connect to terminal two. And you'll notice there's no connection at all. So basically we've got three phases of voltage sitting there waiting for us to do something, okay? Waiting for us to turn it to the forward or to the reverse position. So let's go ahead and do that first. And I'm gonna step this through one at a time. We're gonna go through reverse because it's a little bit easier to understand and see uh, the lines go kind of straight across like this as opposed to this. So let's step it through one phase at a time. Now all three phases come uh, switch at the same time, but uh, I'm going to just step it through so you can kind of see what's going on. First of all, in reverse, we have a connection between one and two. Okay, this is L1 right here, and we have a connection from our power lead, and then when we turn our switch to reverse, there's a connection made inside the drum switch from uh, terminal two, and it goes out of terminal one, 
and then it goes to the motor to our T1 terminal. Okay, now none of this is wired for, it doesn't show the wiring for the high voltage or low voltage. This is just the incoming terminals uh, for the motor, just for simplicity's sake. Okay, so we've got L1 connecting to L2. Our diagram tells us that L3 and L4 are connected. Well, L3 is our, um, excuse me, uh, position three and four are connected. So L3 comes in on terminal three and it makes a connection to four and four is then delivered to T3 of our motor. Okay, so now you've got two of our three leads hooked up. And then we have a connection when we move to reverse between five and six. L2 comes in and lands on uh, terminal number six and there's a connection over to number five, and then that delivers it to terminal two. So there's all three phases of our uh, voltage going to our motor when we're in the reverse mode. L1 winds up on T1, L3 winds up on T3, L2 winds up on L2, okay? So now we're gonna shut it back off. Again, now there's no connections going on whatsoever, so we don't have any voltage going to the three-phase motor. Now I wanna switch this to the forward position. And here, inside the switch, is what's going on. We're making a connection instead of one and two, we're gonna make a connection between one and three. And instead of um, two and uh, three and four, we're gonna make a connection between two and four. Five and six are gonna stay the same because remember, we're only swapping two leads, all right? So, uh, we've got five and six making that same connection. So, let's take a look at how our, our uh, phases will travel through the switch, one phase at a time, okay? So, first of all, we have uh, a connection being made between one and three. So our power comes in on terminal three, we shift it to forward, and then we've got a connection to one, and it's going down to T1. Notice now that t uh, line three, L3, is now on T1, where it was line one was on T1 earlier for the, for the reverse mode, okay? For the uh, next one, we have a connection be between two and four when we're in the forward mode. So our line one that's, will come in and connect to terminal two, and that will make a connection internally to, to, to terminal four, outgoing terminal four, and then it goes to T3 on the motor. So these two leads have swapped. Notice that here in the reverse, in the forward, five and six to stay the same. So L2 is gonna come in on terminal six. It's gonna go out of the switch on terminal five and connect it to T2. So that's how the, the drum switch makes its uh, switches uh, the, the swapping of the two phases on the inside there. Inside there are some pretty heavy contacts that can handle the arcing of a motor, particularly if one is jammed up. Uh, so if, you, if we open it up and if you come to the lab, uh, grab me, we'll, we'll take one apart and you can see the big heavy copper contacts inside, uh, special coating on them to keep you know, from pitting and arcing and burning and things like that. But uh, we go like the off position and that's pretty much how a drum switch works. Um, this, like I said, it's primarily used to give an operator control without, uh, if you'll notice, there was no controls engineering going on at all, no, no control circuits, uh, no magnetic starters, no, nothing like that. Once you get the motor running and the starter brings the, the voltage to the motor, um, I mean to the, to the uh, drum switch, the operator has the ability to either shut it off or reverse it if need be. But that is a drum switch. And so now uh, we're gonna move into reversing motor starters. That's gonna be on the next uh, session of this uh, lesson. So, uh, if, you know, hopefully you took some notes and got the diagram. You'll play with one in the lab. Uh, that is gonna be on the Amatrol trainer. So uh, come on in and, and then after, after the rest of the videos here and we'll work with them. So other than that, uh, I want you to come back and watch the reversing magnetic motor uh, portion of this lesson. Okay, thanks a lot.